Hello, and welcome to this short video overview of the seven C's of professional communication. Now, if ever you forget the seven C's and need to revisit them, know that they're always available in your textbook, business and professional writing, a basic guide, second edition. But I would like to provide you with just something additional where we look at the seven C's step by step and talk about how they connect to our own lived experiences and um, also introduce you to some resources that are going to help you abide by the seven C's in your professional communication. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started going through a review of these seven C's. So to begin, when we're thinking about the seven C's, I think it's probably most useful to think of them as a toolkit against which to compare your workplace writing to make sure that it's meeting criteria, to ensure that it's clear, concise, concrete, complete, courteous, coherent, and constructive. These are all things in professional workplace communication that are extremely important. They will not only improve your communication, but likely improve your workplace relationships as well, because clear communication is kind communication, and it is much appreciated in professional environments. So to get started, the first first C that we're going to look at is clarity. And this really speaks to the need to be precise, particularly in professional environments. It's so important to say what you mean and mean what you say. So one example of communication that's not precise and might be considered unclear is your speech shouldn't be too long, right? We've all had this. Like, think about it. if a teacher said this to you, your speech shouldn't be too long. You would probably respond with questions. Well, what constitutes too long in your mind? I know I personally don't like speaking, so too long for me would be 30 seconds. Not really, but you get my idea. So to prevent people from having confusion and following up with you with additional questions, it's nice to give them precise communication. So an example of a correction to the sentence would be your speech should be no longer than five minutes. Then they know exactly how much time they have for their speech and what not to exceed. That's typically what we'll see in terms of precision for speech timelines and things in the workplace, because typically there's an agenda and on that agenda, everyone's allotted a particular amount of time. So in this case, saying five minutes, super, super helpful. That means the communication is clear and actionable and the person can actually proceed knowing that they don't want to exceed five minutes as opposed to just, you know, not too long. All right, next we have conciseness. So important in your communication to be succinct. People are busy and they need to receive communication in the most efficient way possible. We all receive tons of emails a day in addition to being inundated with other texts, whether in the news media, social media, what have you, we don't have a lot of time to read. So by making sure that your wording is concise, you can be courteous to people. And that's another thing about the seven C's. They overlap. Being concise is also being courteous um, when we think about it. So here's an example of a wordy sentence that we have. I am writing to inform you that the deadline for the project has been extended. Seldom is it necessary when you're writing to someone to tell them I am writing to inform you. Clearly, if you're writing to someone with information, your goal is to convey that information to them. So it's not really necessary to say that. It just takes up extra words, extra sentence. That's implied meaning. Also, one thing that we find contributes to wordiness quite a bit are prepositional phrases. You can review that in your book on the chapter on grammar and correctness. Uh, but for the project is an example of a prepositional phrase that can actually be changed to an adjectival phrase. So you could say, the project deadline as opposed to the deadline for the project. And so once we've eliminated this unnecessary wording in the prepositional phrase, we're left with this. The project deadline has been extended. Exactly what we wanted to communicate. Now, one could argue that that needs to be more precise. We need to know how long it's been extended. But in this case, we're focusing on conciseness. Um, we would further work with this sentence to make sure that it is precise and clear. So again, it's going to save time for your audience and more effectively communicate by getting straight to the point. One resource I really recommend if you're wanting to really look at your wordiness and start to think about ways to combat it is this particular wordiness list, which is maintained by G. Kim Blank. So I have the website right here. It is a little dated, but it's still a great A to Z resource on common pitfalls that happen when it comes to wordiness, what we're likely to do when we're being wordy in our communication and how we can overcome it. So 
if you're saying, you know, all across, you'll just say across instead. So you have A to Z examples to go through. What I'm going to do at this point in the video is I'm going to stop the video. And what's going to happen in your video viewer is this website is going to pull up and you're going to be able to interact with it right here and explore some of these um, ways to avoid wordiness in your communication. Once you're done exploring the wordiness list, you can click play and resume the video. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to learn something from the wordiness, wordiness, wordiness list. It's always a great resource for just making sure that your communication is as concise as it can be. All right, so moving on, concreteness, be specific. A lot of times in the workplace, there's nothing more frustrating than being given vague instructions and not really understanding how to proceed. So one example of how this could happen is your boss might say to you, we need to improve customer service. Well, how you envision improving customer service might be different from how your boss envisions, you know, improving customer service. So the important thing is to ensure alignment of vision and understanding that of what the shared goal is, is to say what exactly constitutes improvement in your mind. So here we have the corrected example. We need to respond to customer inquiries within 24 hours. So this is what the boss specifically had in mind for improving customer service was to increase that turnaround time and get back to people more quickly. And this leaves no question that that is how the boss is measuring improvement in this situation. So again, the expectation is defined and actionable and will prevent people from responding with a lot of questions and getting frustrated because they don't have the clarity that they need to do their jobs well. So again, concreteness is also being courteous. It's also being um, concise and respectful of people's time and energy to make sure they're pointing their energies in the right direction. All right, so completeness. It's really important to provide full context in emails. I think a lot of times, particularly in professional environments, we see and work with the same people repeatedly, and we always assume we're on the same page in terms of what we remember of our last discussion. And with that assumption, what happens is we leave essential details out, and that can be really frustrating for people. So let's say an example of that. I might have had an email the week before where, or a, a meeting the week before where we discussed a new policy. It, it, odds are I've had several meetings this week where we've discussed a new policy. So getting an email the next week that says the new policy we discussed last week is now in effect is not extremely helpful to me. I have to go through my mental inventory of what policies did we discuss last week and in which meeting was it discussed? So rather than having me go through the mental inventory of figuring that out, it's just better to tell people, you know, hey, the new policy on vacation time is now in effect. And then take that one step further and attach the new policy on vacation time if it is available. This, again, makes the message comprehensive and actionable for your audience, and it respects their time and energy, doesn't force them to try to think through all the meetings and policies they were um, talking about last week. And then courtesy, being polite. Um, this is mainly just saying please and thank you. In written communication, there's a lot of room for interpretation about how people are feeling or, or what type of attitude they have toward you. And we want to eliminate as much as possible that room for interpretation. So in being polite, it just kind of softens the message a little bit to where it's more palatable for people and they can handle it better. So what might be construed as rude is you need to submit the report immediately. Rather than say that, please submit the report as soon as possible. So minding those please and thank yous and using constructive language that conveys respect and encourages cooperation. Now, I would say you take this one step further and give a very specific, what does immediately mean? Does that mean like this minute or does it mean by close of business? Again, all of these can be further improved by taking out that toolkit of the seven C's and comparing your language against that. Coherence, connecting the dots, making sure that the connections between your sentences are clear. So in this first example, we have a disjointed example where we have the sales numbers were good. We like the new marketing campaign. Now from this, I might deduce that the new marketing campaign is responsible for the improved good sales numbers, but I can't be certain that that's the case. It could be that they're just like, you know, providing a list of things that are going well. 
So rather than just provide it kind of as a list of things that are going well, we want to show that these two things are actually connected. And we do that with our language. We could say the sales numbers were good this quarter, which we attribute to the successful marketing campaign. So it shows the relationship between the marketing campaign and the sales number. And we're not left to imagine what that connection might be. And last, constructiveness, um, negative, your work on the Macaulay account was sloppy. First of all, that's just not very helpful. What particularly was sloppy about the work? How can the work be improved? This is just a categorical dismissal of the work, which I don't think too many people would appreciate. So rather than say that, you could correct it and say your work on the Macaulay account could be improved by greater attention to spelling and grammar. Again, that gives people something growth-oriented to work towards. So rather than just focusing on what's wrong, focus on what could be improved to make things better. That is being constructive and positive in your feedback. And so again, just to think about the seven C's, thinking about clarity, conciseness, concreteness, completeness, courtesy, coherence, and constructiveness. All of these things are going to help your daily communication and elevate your professional interactions. So think about these seven elements as a toolkit that you can break out and look at compared to your communication and figure out what you can be, um, what you can do to be a better professional communicator. And really that's all there is. Now there is an eighth C, spoiler alert. Um, you'll be learning about that in your textbook as well. And that is correctness. So that's where we'll look at grammar and some of the other things that make language kind of intelligible across the board between people. That the reasons we have grammar are so that there's some kind of standard communication that we can adhere to and make sure messages are clear. So look forward to that. Otherwise, um, happy communicating. Thank you for your attention.